Hi and welcome to another video from AI Sciences. In this video, we are going to see that how we can drag and drop objects using gestures. I'm your instructor Muhammad Ahmed and in this video, we are going to see that how we can use OpenCV to get the videos from the webcam and then how we can use MediaPipe library for actually getting the landmarks on the hand and then we are going to see the, that how we can control the objects present on our screen and then eventually we will be doing some hands-on with that. If you are new to our channel, then just a brief introduction of AI Sciences that at the platform of AI Sciences, we are providing a number of facilities, number of functionalities regarding software development, product development, creating courses for AI, artificial intelligence and computer vision and whatnot. If you are interested in any of this, then do visit the link present in the description. So let's just begin. <laughs> So here you can see that I'm in my PyCharm IDE and for this video, we are not going to write the code from the scratch. We will be using the code that we actually written in the previous video for fingers counter. You can check the link in the description as well, in which we detected that how many fingers are open and we just did a simple fingers count over there. Now we will be using the same code, but this time we will try to detect the landmarks of the hand and then we will try to detect that which of the landmarks, the, the index landmark and the second finger landmarks, if they both are available inside the object, then we will consider that object available for the drag and drop. Otherwise, that object will be considered as freezed. For the objects, we will create a simple circle. And if you want, if you want to improvise it, you can add images, you can add layout images, anything you want to do, you can just improvise uh, with using this base code. The basic idea for this video is just to provide you the fundamentals that how you can actually play around with the objects present on the screen using MediaPipe and OpenCV. So we will be using two libraries, OpenCV uh, for capturing the videos and for just simply providing the basic functionality regarding the videos and images. Then we will be using MediaPipe library for extracting the landmarks on our hand. I'm not going in depth again because we have discussed this complete code. Actually, we have written this code from scratch in the previous video. So I would highly encourage you to just go back over there, develop the understanding and then come back here. So just a brief introduction over here that at this level, we are detecting the, we provided the zero instead of the video name. So we get the video from our webcam. Next point is we are detecting, we actually extracted the empty hands object, then we created the hands object, then we are specifying the drawing utilities. Over here, we are mentioning that we want to get the finger coordinates of all the, all the fingers and all the thumbs. So we don't need the thumb right now. So I'm just trimming this code out. If you want, you can write it from the scratch, totally depends on you. So over here, then we are reading the image, we are converting it and then let's just do a flip of it as well. So after getting the image, we will go for image cv2.flip. Now what it will do, instead of getting the image inverted, instead of getting the video inverted, we will get the video in the proper manner, in the proper directions. Then we are converting it into the RGB. Then we are getting the results and we are extracting the landmarks again. All this is mentioned in the previous video. You can just go and check it out. So after here, we are extracting all the, uh, we are just drawing the points, the dots on our extracted landmarks. And here we are iterating on all the coordinates and we are just checking that what are the, that how many fingers are open or not. So we don't need this at the moment right now and we don't need this as well. So now what we have to do, we have to develop the, uh, the functionality to check that whether our one finger is open or our both the fingers are open. And then based on that, as I discussed earlier, we will decide that whether we want to drag the object or we don't, we just want to uh, move around. And if the two fingers are open, then we will say that we want to actually drag and drop the object. So if we go for hand points and we try to extract the eight, so here we 
we actually saw in the previous video that this 8 is representing the index point or the top point of our index finger. Then we have to check it with the y axis and we have to check that if it is less than hand points of 6 and then 1. So the basic idea is we are checking that if the index point is below this one. So it's just exactly the same thing that we did over here. So here we are checking that if the top point is below the middle point then we are considering it as the open otherwise we are considering it as the close. Again if you are if you just uh, stumble upon this video I would highly recommend you to go back to the finger counters video and develop the basic understanding that how we are detecting that the finger is open or not and then come back over here and then this thing will make much more sense to you. So we are checking it over here and let's just put it in an in if statement and here we have to just check that first finger open let's just make it as false by default and then second finger open and let's just make it false as well by default. Then over here if this condition is met then this means that our first finger is open so we can just simply go for first finger open equals to true and then for the second finger we just have to put the second condition. So for the second finger coordinates we have to visit the 12 which is the tip of the second finger and then we have to visit the 10 which is the middle point or the center section of our second finger. And then if it is true then we have to say that the second finger open is true. Now let's just reformat this and let's just go to top because we don't need these coordinates we just simply eliminate them. Over here let's just print this out. So we are just developing the idea that how we can check if our both the fingers are open and how we can check if only one finger is open. And then based on that we will draw some objects on our screen and we will just simply drag and drop it. So if we just give it a go. Again I'm not actually on my original machine so I'm using this terminal but if you are on your original machine or you do the machine on which you used to do you can just simply write the same command over here python main.py and it will run for you. Just make sure you are in the same directory where your main.py file is available. So here if I may go for this one it will start my webcam and now as soon as I put my hand over there it is detecting and just notice these two trues. We are getting two trues because the first finger and the second finger both are open. Now if I just make it this one so just notice that we are getting although we are getting some glitches but this is actually bearable it's not something uh, we are really worried about but we are getting this and then if we go for the two fingers we are getting that both of the two fingers are open. Just bear with the glitches, this is just because of the uh, camera quality and bad light in the room. But if you have good light and you, you are uh, working fine, then this will actually provide, don't the, this will not only give you the perfect result, but it won't do even any glitches. So next thing, let's just close this. So we have developed the idea that what are the fingers that are open. So we, we want to develop the idea that after getting that if both of the fingers are open then we want to drag and drop the object otherwise we don't want to just we just want it to keep uh, state as it is. So for that the first thing is we have to draw an object on the screen that we will proceed working with. So we will just go for this point and we will go for just make sure you are taking it one indentation back because otherwise it will only draw the object if it finds any hands inside the image because we have this if statement over here. So just make sure that you are drawing when you are putting this statement you are putting it one indentation back. So we will go for cv2 dot circle and we want to draw the circle on this image and the center point for this circle is let's say we just go on the top and declare a variable for center point.
So for the center point, let's just make it as 120 and 100, right? I have actually pre-configured that. If you want, you can tweak it. So it totally depends on you. So we have the center point and now we will try to draw a circle on this center point. So after defining the center point, we have to define the radius for our, uh, for the particular circle. So instead of just defining some hard coded values, we will go on the top and declare the variables over there. So we will go for radius. We will provide the color and we will provide the thickness. Let's just take these three variables and go for the top. So for the radius, we want our circle to be of radius 60. For the color, we want it to be, let's just define two colors at the top and then use the colors. So for the red color, we have zero, zero and two five five. For the green color, so we will be considering the, these two colors, so if we want to show that our particular object, our circle is basically locked, then we will use the red color and otherwise we will be using the green color. So by default it is locked. So we will just put the red here and okay. So for the green, it should be zero, two, five, five and zero. So by default, we want to consider it as locked. So we will put the red color over here and for the thickness, we want to make it, let's say, the thickness is 20, right? So now if we just give it a go, so we are getting this circle over here. Perfect. Next thing is we have to detect that whether our hand, our, our actual fin fingers are available inside the hand, inside the circle or not. So what I'm saying is, that right now, if I may just drag and put my fingers over here, you can notice that nothing is happening. Now what I will do, I will de develop the basic idea that will detect that if my index finger, if this tip point, this one is basically inside this circle, then I want to make it green and I want it to be able to drag and drop provided that both of these fingers are open. So for that, if we just close this, also, you can control, uh, you can close this by hitting control C. So next thing is we have to detect that if our finger, if our index finger is available inside the particular circle. So for that, we need a formula and for the formula, actually, I'm not going to rewrite this formula and uh, actually write this formula and explain it to you because this is much more into mathematical terminologies that how this formula is working. I will just paste the formula over here and then we will discuss that what's what's the basic idea of this and how we can check that if the value is greater than or equal to zero, then the point is inside the circle. Otherwise, it's not inside the circle. So for the formula, we have to develop that, let's say the D variable, and then we need to go for the radius raised to power two. And then we need to minus the circle again i would recommend you to just go along with this and for the center point of zero which is the x and we need to subtract it with the hand point for this one eight and we want to get its x-axis now what we are doing we are checking this center point on which we actually draw drew the circle we are considering it x and then we are subtracting it from the hand point, the index finger and its tip. So we are extracting the x axis of the tip from this section and we are extracting the x axis of the center point of our circle. So this is the first thing and what we have to do, we just have to raise it to the power of two. So if I may just reformat it for you to see it easily. So this section and over here, this section. So this is the first thing and we have to just raise it to the power of two. 
then we have to plus the for the y and again we have to raise it to the power of 2 then this thing is closing with this bracket and eventually we have to just simply convert it into integer again this is something totally related to maths and if you are not getting this then don't worry you just need to get this formula and write it as it is and this formula will provide you with the basic idea that whether the given point whether our index finger is available is currently inside the circle or not for me as well i actually didn't uh, get through with this in much more depth because it's something not our domain we just need to get this formula and detect that whether our hand our finger is inside the circle or not so this will provide us with the d and then we have to check that if d is greater than and equals to zero so then that means that our hand our finger is inside the circle so let's just right now print the inside and otherwise for the else let's just print outside so we are not doing any fancy stuff over here we are just checking that if the value for this t is greater than or equal to zero then we are printing that this is inside and otherwise it is outside so hopefully if the formula is right everything will work fine so python main dot pi and here now if Okay, let's just terminate the other statement because we don't need to get the this print statement because it is just messing the output. Now, if we run it again, so right now we are getting the outside and as soon as I put my finger over here, I'm getting the inside, that's perfect. So when I'm going outside, I'm getting the outside notation and when I'm dragging my finger inside, I'm getting the inside. So that's the basic idea. Now the thing is we actually have to change the color if our finger is inside the circle. So let's just declare a variable and say it inside. And let's just make it false by default. Then if this statement is true, then we will go for inside and set it as true otherwise we just need to go over here and set inside as false and for this variable let's just take it to the top so by default it's false and then over here for each iteration if it is inside we are printing the we are setting inside as true otherwise we are setting the out inside as false next is we have to change the color based on that so we will check that if we are inside then we have to change the color of it so we will check that if we are inside then we need to change the color from this red to green so let's just make it as green so if it is inside then we need to change the color as green and else if it is not inside then we need to change the color to again red so it will provide us with the visualizations that whether our hand is inside the thing inside the circle or not now if i just drag and drop my hand it's green and then as soon as I get out it's red again so our around 50% work is done. We are detecting that whether our hand is inside the circle, our finger is inside the circle. And then we are just detecting that the, the particular finger is outside the circle or not. So we have developed the basic idea and we are changing the color for the visualizations as well. Now this, now at this moment, we have the basic foundation laid. Next thing is we have to just drag and drop the circle so for that if we are inside then we have to check that if both the fingers are open because we can go for if i may just run it so if i just put my one finger over here it's green 
but if I only have one finger, it's still green. So we have to develop the idea that if both the fingers are in both the fingers are open and we are inside this circle, then we want to drag and drop it. Otherwise, we just want to keep it as it is where it is. So let's just take these two and put it over here inside this and we have to check that if this is true and this is true then we want to change the color and then we will move further with the basic idea now if i may just go inside this with one finger open it won't do anything now as soon as i go for two one two fingers i'm getting it as green if i again close it it's again red and if i go for two it's again red so we are pretty much there next thing is we have to just change the position of our circle so we have to consider this center point if it is green and then we have to make it as center point for our hand of index 8 which is our index finger location that's it so now if we run that So here, if I may just go inside this, you can see that I'm able to drag and drop it. Just ignore the glitches because of the bad light. And if I may just go outside, I'm not getting anything. Finger finger, I'm not getting anything. As soon as I get with two fingers, I can drag and drop with it. So the basic idea is there. You can actually improvise it. You can add more circles. You can just play around with it as you want because it totally depends that how you want to play with it. You can add images, you can add any other object and you can just drag and drop it over here. Although the basic idea in the advanced computer, in the advanced computer vision technologies and in the advanced TVs where you can see that you can drag and drop the object, the under the hood idea is exactly the same. They are just detecting the landmarks on the hand that what are the landmarks on the hand and then based on that they are detecting the fingers and then they are detecting that which object you are considering and which object you want to move. So bas the basic idea is exactly the same. So this is pretty much it from this video. I hope that you have developed the idea, you have developed the understanding that how we can use computer vision to drag and drop the object present on the screen. This is pretty much it from this video. I would highly recommend you to play around with this, to improvise new things, to get new ideas, to add more circles. And if in this way you stuck at any point, we are here for you. Just, uh, just mention this, just mention the issues in the comment section. And we will try to get back to you on that as soon as possible. Also, please do subscribe to our channel AI Sciences and do hit the bell icon so that you get the notifications of our upcoming videos. So this is pretty much it from this video. I will see you in the next one.